Ecclesiastes chapter 4. So I return. That's interesting. Verse 7. Then I return. So I return and consider. So Solomon, when he's pursue, pursuing the earthly, worldly thing, he stepped out of it. He took a break. And then he would go back and look and examine and study. And I'm I'm not I'm trying not to say philosophy. Because I don't want you to put Solomon with the worldly philosopher. I would put this as a man of God experiment into the worldly endeavors of the pursuit of a man who pursued everything. God has given that ability and the right to us. And when we get to chapter 12, Lord willing, and we'll see the entire conclusion. But we have a man who has the wisdom and knowledge of God, the king of Israel, God's people. And he's going for all of it. And he's living in it all. And writing it down under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to say, hey, you know what? You don't need to go swimming in the sewer to know that it is stinky, it's filthy, and it's dirty. You don't need to do that. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to live life to its fullest. Solomon did that and he tells us vanity is vanity, vexation, irritation. So he returned and considered all the impressions that are done under the sun. Again, that's the theme of the book of Ecclesiastes. It's not heavenly. It's not universal. I mean, out of space. It is on this earth. Oppressions. And behold the tears of such as were oppressed. So he looks at the oppressions of the world and those that are oppressed and he sees tears. And they had no comforter. That's the first time that word shows up. Now later on Jesus will tell us after Jesus ascends into heaven. And those that believe we will get a comforter. In our oppressions and in our sufferings and in our trials and in our afflictions we will have the comforter that abides with us if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Solomon don't know that. He says as the king of Israel I see people they're in oppression and they are tears and there's nothing to, nothing at all to comfort them. And on the side of their oppressors so we've got oppressions, oppressed, and the oppressors. On the side of the oppressors, there was power. But they had no comforter. You know what Solomon said? The one that is oppressing the oppressed, they have the power, and yet the oppressed has no comforter. The oppressors are keeping are keeping oppressing the oppressed. They are not comforting. They're not helping. They're not eliminating. They're oppressing, 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 oppressing. That's what Satan does. And he'll keep on and keep on and keep on. It's amazing in the medical field that I know from two wives that have cancers and my own medical problems. The oppression that the medical field will put on somebody to pay their bills. You don't pay us, we're going to send the credit people after you. We want you health and we want you well so you can pay your bills. Pay our bills. Pay our bills. Pay our bills. We can't pay it. We don't have enough money to pay. I don't care. Pay your bills. Hospitals. I'll tell you another one. Radiology. 
Who are these people involved with x-rays and reading x-rays? And they send you this enormous oppressive bill for whatever services they do to read an x-ray. I've gotten more trouble with bills over the hospital bill and the radiology. And they never show a relief. They don't care. They want their money. Wherefore I praise the dead, which are already dead, more than the living, because, I mean, more than the living, which are yet alive. Yea, better is he that both they which have not yet been, who have not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Thomas says it's better to be dead. All right, this shows you truly we're not looking at the heaven and we're not looking at the eternal life. We're not looking at the eternal soul. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. We're looking at this book now. What doesn't Solomon know? We got 66 books in the King James Bible, correct? What's the Bible say about the rich man that was in hell? He's in torment. The Bible tells us that Jesus said the place of darkness and gnashing of teeth. It's a place of torments forever. You don't ever get out of hell. When you do get out of hell, the great white throne judgment, you're cast in. Death in hell is cast in the lake of fire. And you go into the lake of fire for all eternity. Solomon writes to us, I praise the dead. We know about the lost man. He goes off into hell. Those that went to Abraham's bosom, we know from Saul, uh, some, uh, Samuel, they go off and sleep until the Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died and resurrected and they came out of their graves. But Solomon is looking at life as under the sun. When you die, I'm not looking at the eternal life. That body, it, it has no pain, it has no oppression, it has no bills to pay. And in the Old Testament, Solomon separated him and his father. And that Samuel, the testimony we have because King Saul brought him up by the witch. There was no assurance when a lost man died. Uh, excuse me. There's no assurance when an Old Testament man died. Because he could have done everything he was supposed to in the Old Testament, die under the wrath of God, and then lost it all and gone to hell. He did not have assurance of security of salvation in the time of Solomon. So Solomon is writing a dead body. I, I go to a funeral of a dead body. I can take 12 tons of weight and put it on that dead body and he's not going to moan. You can take a full dump truck and run over a dead body and he's not going to complain. You can chop a dead body in half. No problem. That's what Solomon's saying. The dead body is not the soul. Not uh, the eternal life. But that dead body... You know what? It, it's better to be that dead body. Because it don't suffer. It has no pain. It has no sorrow. No vexation. Again, I consider, I'm still looking at life. I'm still experimenting. I'm still studying the human race under the sun. All the travail. Again, the travail we see in, in chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible describes travail as a woman about to give birth. The anguish. 
It also describes travail as the time of the Jews and Jacob's trouble in the tribulation period, and more so after the three, the last three and a half years. I consider the travail and every right work. I looked at both sides. That for this a man is envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of the spirit. Somebody's looking at their neighbor and I wish I had that. I wish I had that job. I wish I had that position. I wish I had what he has. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. As vanity and it's irritation of the spirit. You can wish all you want. It may not happen. Envy. Envy is a sin. Envy, Solomon tells us in the, pro in the proverb, it, it's worse than wrath. It's worse than anger. It's got great weight to it. The fool foldeth his hand together and eateth his own skin or flesh. See, that's cool. He puts his hands at, at, on his chest and he leaves them there. And he's dying of dehydration and malnutrition. It's His body is decomposing itself because he won't labor to eat. He won't get food. That's a fool. He's having a food strike or hunger strike. I'm going to fast a stupid fast. I'm going to do a religious fast. Now he's not talking about the fast in the law or, or prescribed for God. He's talking about a religious fast. He's talking about somebody who's having a food strike, a hunger strike, or he's just plain lazy. And you're going to die of malnutrition, and you're going to die of dehydration. And your body is going to use whatever it has in it for the dehydration to be hydrated, and the malnutrition for, for, the, for the nutrition. I learned that with my wife who was dying by hospice. She hadn't eaten for weeks. And they told me the body's taken whatever's been in the reserve, whatever's in the fat, whatever's in the vessels, whatever is stored up, the body's going to use that. Then once it has no more to use, better is a handful with quietness Increase with goods. A handful. <clears throat> One hand. Not, not much you can put in one hand. Then both hands. Full with travail and vexation of spirit. Vexation is irritation. It's better to have whatever you can put. In your hand and be quiet and still then having both your hands full with everything which much goods and then you have travail again that serious great pain then you have the irritation of your spirit then I return so it looks like to me Solomon takes little breaks from his study. And he gets back to the kingdom. He gets back to, to the real life. And then he comes back and looks at something else. I didn't look at that as I looked at it before. Or I haven't looked at that before. Let me look at it. Let me study this. I returned and saw the vanity, emptiness under the sun. Life under the sun. 
There is a there is one alone. And there's not a second. Now he's going to talk about verse 7 to 12. He's going to talk about loneliness. And loneliness will kill somebody. It'll kill somebody as much as depression, anxiety. God gave Adam a help me after God gave Adam work. It has been known for a spouse that has died that the widower has also died within months of their spouse dying. And even shorter. Yea, he has neither child, no children, not one child, not even a child, nor brother, no family. Yet is there no end of all his labor. He's working. He's got duty. He's got a job. He's busy. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. He can have all the wealth and great riches. But if he ain't got a brother, he ain't got a child, and he's all by himself, he's a loner, he's, he's alone. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor? Well, why am I labor? Why am I doing all this for? And bereaved my soul to deprive or strip my soul of good. There's no good in the eternal soul if I'm alone. This is vanity. It's nothing. Yea, it's a sore travail, that serious pain. And many people who are married and dealing with a widower, I need to get married, I need to find someone. They have no idea what loneliness can do. And I've heard stories of widowers, well, they spend every single day of their life in tears. And the married, oh, maybe God will give you somebody. Or maybe, you know. You don't know how close I come sometimes to saying, well, maybe God should give to you what we're going through. And that's, that's a hard statement. When I'm really saying to myself, I don't come out of my, I want you to shut up because you don't know what it's like. Two are better than one. That's what God thought in Genesis 2. Because they have a good reward for their labor. What, what What's the good? You bring home your paycheck and you share it with a loved one. You got a child. You got a brother. You got, you got a wife. You got a husband. You're not alone. For if they fall. The one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Now they got that commercial. And they got that woman. She's she's falling down in the, in the bathroom. And you know, she pushes. Help me I'm falling. I can't get up. And people make jokes about it. That's no laughing matter. And I'm telling you. If you're going to laugh at an elderly person who has fallen down their house and has no help to help, I hope God returns that upon your head. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man so that he shall also reap. They have found old people on the ground in the bedroom or the bathroom or the kitchen somewhere in their house and they found them dead dehydrated, and malnutrition because they fell on the floor, there was no one to help them, and they died on that floor. Don't you be laughing. <laughs> it will be bad. She couldn't get up. You're sick. May God turn it upon you. 
You put that right up there with, with joking about marriage, which I hate. <laughs> Isn't it funny that woman fell? Solomon said, <coughs> read the Bible. Now, if that woman or that man had somebody to come home within time that afternoon at the end of the day at work. Oh, oh my spouse is falling down. I need to get help. They wouldn't have found. I got an aunt who lived uh, lived alone, and it was days and days until her ch her sons came and found her dead. Nobody knew. That's not funny. What was there? There's a time to weep, there's a time to laugh, there's a time to mourn, there's a time to dance. Chapter 3, verse 4. Laughing at someone's misery. Whoa, I feel sorry for you at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. It's not something funny. Woe to him that when he is alone, when he falls, for he has no, not another to help him up. And they found him dead on the ground. Or if they do find him within time, he'll end up in a longer hospital stay and will need, you know, antibiotics and will need IVs to restore what the body lost. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. Well, listen, the only two are going to really lie together is a husband and wife. I'm looking at 7 through 12, a husband and wife. But how can one be warm alone? Well, I know what they do in the modern, you know, electric blanket, more blanket. They didn't have that in Solomon's time. Do you read about when David got old, they, they went and got a, a vichy eye? The woman to lie with David because he couldn't get heat. <clears throat> he said, well, why didn't they get Bathsheba and all that? She was old too. When you get old, your body heat disappears. Your blood stops flowing. They needed someone young who had heat. And listen, there was no sexual relation. David needed a warm body, <laughs> no pun intended, for his... Listen, he's the king of all... You mean to tell me he couldn't find blankets and all that? They couldn't afford sheet blankets for the shepherd to keep them warm? Solomon says, hey, two are needed. Now, there are men who have been eunuch for the Lord. There have been men born to be eunuchs. There have been men made to be eunuchs. All right. But not all men to be to, are set to be yours. There are some men who have purpose in their life. I need somebody. That's me. And that reference is 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 with David. Solomon knows on a first hand stand his own father and his own mother. Solomon was alive when David was old, and they had to get Abishai. Remember Solomon's brother? Hey, Bathsheba, I got a, I got a thing. What? Can you can you ask Solomon the king if I could have Abishai to be my wife, and so I can usurp the authority over Solomon? Listen, Solomon knew all about that. Solomon looked at his father and looked at his old age and looked at Abishai. Hey, you need two people to keep you warm. You know what kept a lot of families warm up in New England in the winters? The whole family slept together in one bed in one room. Mama, Papa, and all the kids. If one prevail against him, someone's overpowered you. Two shall withstand him. Protection. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. What's a threefold cord when you talk about a husband and wife? God, the husband, and the wife. Three-fold cord. I'm telling you, you don't joke about someone being alone. You don't joke about, I'm falling, I need help. 
You don't take lightly a widower who's been made a widow and is lonely. Maybe one day God will pass on to you with your big mouth. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that you shall also reap. And you'll reap worse. I'm just saying, you don't like what I'm saying? That's tough. I don't care. It's Bible. Some men want to be want, don't want the spouse. They don't, they're happy with okay, Amen. They're happy with friends. They need friends. Listen, even monks in a monastery have each other. Better is a poor and a wise child than a old and foolish king. So he's poor, he's young, but he's wise. He's old and he's foolish. Who will no more be admonished. Admonish. For out of prison, Joseph. Don't tell me Solomon didn't know the Bible. That's Joseph. For out of prison he cometh to reign. That's Joseph. Whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. Joseph suffered with the people just as much in the famine. Though he didn't have to buy the corn. And listen, he is still on rations. He had a wife and two sons. When he when he bought everything from the from the Egyptians, he bought everything for Pharaoh, not himself. He got the land in the name of Pharaoh, not Joseph. I consider all the living. He looked at everybody living, which walk under the sun. With the second child that shall stand up in his stead. From the foolish king, verse 13. I don't know. Well, he's saying people come and people go. And you'll see later on throughout Judah, there were, in some of the kings, a child of the king, the second child was brought up to be the king. The first one was killed, the first one went into captivity. That don't promise nothing. Solomon was not David's firstborn. Solomon was the one that God chose. Not by election. I have to say that. There is no end of all the people. Now, let me just ask you for a minute. Bible believing, born again Christians on this side of Calvary, we got 66 books of the Bible. Is there coming a time when there'll be no more people born on this earth? Yes. At the end of the millennium, When the devil comes and tries to fight Jesus and the people out of the millennium and then, you know, God just casts them off the lake of fire. The heavens and earth are, are gone. They, they burn up in the fervent heat. There's no more children born. Does Solomon know that? You know what Solomon's thinking? You know what the Jew thinks about when he's in the Old Testament? He, the Jew is not looking for heaven. The Jews are not looking for the glory of God's throne in heaven and the angels and the cherubims. They're not looking for that. 
They're looking for a land. Abraham went out and searched for a city, for a land, and he never got it yet. And the Jews believe that they'll die and they live right and do right with God. They will be called one day, they'll be called for a piece of property. The land of Israel that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're not looking for a heaven. And Solomon's looking at sometime in the future there's going to be a resurrection. Can you imagine what the Old Testament saints, when they resurrected just before Jesus came out of grave? We've got the land. All right. And they went up to glory with Jesus. And they're not going to get that land that Jesus Christ comes back, second advent, and we pick up the Jews and say, oh, preacher, whatever that, that, that spot chosen by God, as they did with Rahab, and carry them into the promised land. There's their promised land. There will be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, and Solomon, and, and those that under the law did right. There's that land. There's Jerusalem. There's the king. They didn't look for Jesus on the cross. They looked for Jesus sitting on the throne. Listen, when Jesus fed them in John chapter 6, what did it say? He, 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 he left them because they would make him king. It ain't his time to be a king. Don't go off with this nonsense. Oh, they look forward to Calvary. No. Why was Jesus a failure on the cross being crucified before Pilate and the Roman government? Because he was supposed to conquer the Roman government. They didn't, they, when they sat there, come down off the cross and we will believe. Come down off the cross, conquer Rome, conquer Herod, and then, you know, when we are in, in charge of all the world, then we will believe. They weren't looking for the suffering Messiah. That comes at the second advent, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the lion, the tribe of Judah. And then there's going to be a great surprise at the thousand year end of the millennium. They're standing at the, at the great white throne judgment. Where's our land? It's gone again. And the books were open. They were judged by their works. They're not at the judgment seat of Christ because they're not Christians. Daniel and them were Christians. All right. Are they going to be at the judgment seat of Christ? Absolutely not. That's where Christians are. And they were first called Christians at Antioch. Before the law, during the law, any age but the church age, it will be at the great white throne judgment and the books will be open. If their name is in the Lamb's, excuse me, if their name is in the book of life, it didn't say Lamb's book of life. If their name is in the book of life, they go off into glory. They don't go off in the lake of fire. If their name is not in that book, they go off in the lake of fire. Now, the Christians go to New Jerusalem. We've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We get our rewards and we lose ashes. So after the great white throne judgment, those that their names are not in the book of life go off in the lake of fire to burn forever. What about them whose, whose names are in the book? Where does Noah, where does Abraham, where does Nahum, where does Cain, where does Enoch, where do they get judged? There's no third judgment. Anywhere but the church age is at the great white throne judgment and their name is in the book. What happened? What do the Jews want? What did, what did God promise Abraham? What is that thing in the book of Hebrews says in chapter 11? They look for a land. They look for a piece of property. All right. New Jerusalem goes to the, goes to the Christians. There's two other news. The new earth. The eternal new earth. Well, guess who gets that piece of property? Abraham, Isaac, and his descendants. 
There is the land grant. There's the eternal land grant. There's the for, forever land grant given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is the entire new earth. Wow, what a great thing. I believe Naaman was right with God. I believe Nebuchadnezzar was right with God. I believe Enoch was right with God. I believe Noah was right with God. Was Noah a Jew? Was the land promised to him? No. What about Enoch? What about Naaman? What about if Nebuchadnezzar did get right? What about Cyrus? What about those centurions in the time of Jesus, in the gospel of Jesus, where there was no death, burial, and resurrection yet? What about the Gentiles in the millennium when, that did right? Where did they go? The new heaven. What is Japheth? What is, what is the motive of, hey, I want to get in outer space. What was that, Genesis chapter 5? Let us build a tower. Without God. God says, okay, I'll let you go in outer space when all eternity is finished and, and you've been judged. <laughs> I'm going to give the Christians New Jerusalem. I'm going to give the Gentiles and them. I'm going to give them the new heavens. And then I'll give the Jewish, the people, the new earth. If their name is in the book of life. So there's no end to the people. Yes, Solomon, without the completed Bible you don't have, there is an end to people. You see where Solomon's writing? You can't get no eternal doctrine out of the book of Ecclesiastes. Even of all that have been before them. So take Solomon all the way back to Eve. And Adam. They also that come after. You take all Solomon's children. All the children. Everybody that's in the world. At the time of Solomon. That says BC 977. The whole entire world. Even the known. Un the unknown world. Everybody's going to have babies. To all the population today. That's. And the population tomorrow. Shall not rejoice in him. Who's the him? It goes back to that second child. That's the king. So let me tell you. Let me say the great. Dr. Stiley William Hayward. <laughs> what are you going to say? I don't know what Solomon's talking about. Because Solomon is not the second child. Rehoboam is not the second child. David was the eighth or ninth child. I think eighth. Who is he talking about? I don't know. I ain't got no idea. How's that for intelligence? I'm not afraid to say I don't know. because There are many things in the Bible I don't know. It says, They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. A person. And running back to 15. That second child which shall stand up in his stead. It is better. Better is a poor and wise child. Than an old and foolish king, who had no, who, who will, who will no more be acknowledged. We're not going to honor that king no more. For out of prison he cometh to reign. Who? I know I said Joseph, but in actuality. So the old and foolish king has been rejected. Out of prison cometh to reign. 
Whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. There is this, there is this man that is that comes out of prison. He reigneth. In his reign he becomes poor. No one of Joseph's seed became a king. But it sure looks like the story of, of Joseph, but so you can't say it completely Joseph, but sure looked like Joseph. I consider all the living which walk under the sun with the second child shall stand up in his stead. So here's a second child that stands up instead of one of these kings. It looks like in verse 14, one that comes out of prison becomes poor. And then it looks like a second child comes up and over, overtakes his throne. There is no end of the people. Great masses of population. Even all that have been before them, the people. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him that king that rose up instead you know what one conclusion i get is solomon saying you know what there's a king there have been people before him there are people to come you know what they're not going to listen to the king whether it be poor whether it be old whether it be young whether they come out of prison well, you know, the second child, not the firstborn child. There'll be all these people. They're not going to obey the government. I don't know. That's my five cents. Surely this is vanity, vexation, irritation of the spirit. So a ruler that comes to power and the people don't rejoice in that power. You mean Biden won? Oh, 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 temper tantrum, temper tantrum. And Solomon says that's vanity, vexation of spirit. You're supposed to rejoice in the, in the king or ruler. I thought you were done with politics. I'm not done with politics. They keep bringing it up. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to be done with that weeks ago. No, I'm just saying. Solomon says it is vanity and vexation that who's ever in power and you won't rejoice. You know the monarchy? It gave you no choice of who's going to be the ruler. You didn't have team A and team B or C, D, E, and F. You, it was, hey, this is the king. The next in line is going to be the king. And then the next in line will be the king. And you have no choice. You have no say. You didn't vote or anything. 